<clears throat> okay, so uh, here is our uh, some corrections that I wanted to make uh, to our ground school lesson that we uh, conducted the other day. I said I'd get back to you on some questions, and then I noted a few things in the recording, um, some errors. So I wanted to clarify some of those points with you. I made a couple mistakes, and um, then there were questions. So uh, we'll go through those real quick here. Shouldn't take too long. I thought this is probably the most efficient way to review those. I'll make this uh, available via a YouTube link. All right. So first thing that first and probably the most important mistake that I made, I led you astray on this question, this FAA question. Um, and the question was, VNO is defined as the, and the questions were uh, normal operating range, A, uh, never exceed speed, B, or maximum structural cruising speed, C. Um, and I fell into the trap of using the, uh, the letters there to tell me what the answer was. <clears throat> and I told everyone that A was the correct answer. Everyone went along with me. I think I probably led you astray on that. Um, so uh, thing about that, a V speed is that a V speed will be a specific speed. It's not gonna be a range of speeds. A V speed will always be a specific number. Uh, so and not a range. And kind of what, there is a normal operating range and we did discuss that. We'll see that here in the next frame. And that is, uh, let's get our little highlighter out, laser pointer. Okay, so the normal operating range is that green stripe there, that green arc it's shown up here, green arc, uh, normal operating range. But VNO is shown down here, and it uh, is the maximum structural cruising speed the upper limit of the green arc, that will be VNO. So your VNO on this airspeed indicator would be right up there at the very top. Uh, all right, so, and then one other thing that I kind of wanted to clarify, the bottom of the white arc is VSO. We talked about that. That's the stalling speed in, or minimum stay flight speed in the landing configuration. That would be with your gear down and your uh, flaps down. And that would be your stalling speed at that. VS1 is the bottom of the green arc. Remember we said the VNO is at the top of the green arc and the bottom of the green arc is the stalling speed clean. That's with your flaps up and your gear up. That would be uh, VS1. The way to remember these stalling speeds of VSO and VS1 is VSO is always going to be lower than VS1. Uh, so that's a little trick there to determine VSO. And it, they always say VS1, the, this, the, the, uh, Definition is always in a specified con configuration. And so that configuration would be specified in the pilot's operating handbook, but it's always clean, VS1. And VSO is with the flaps down and the gear down. You've got the maximum drag and the maximum lift. But it's basically in the landing configuration, VSO. So the VNO is not the range. It is that maximum structural cruising speed. That's the maximum speed that you would fly in smooth air. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, I think that's pretty much it for that portion. So I wanna clarify that with you. Next, the next error that I made and uh, fell into a trap, I was fixated on this. And I, one of you, I believe picked up on it because somebody got this answer correct, even though I led everybody else to uh, down the same path that I was on, um, looking at airspeed indicator one, or alt excuse me, altimeter indicator one, and looking for the altimeter uh, reading. And I went with 500 feet, and I think several other, I think, I think the person who answered it said 500, and I agreed with them, and we were all off to the races on 500 being correct. It's, it's not correct, and I think it was Ethan, but I'm not sure that asked me a clarification question about this short, what does this small needle mean? And I think he, he picked up on this and I did not. I was fixated on another question. I think we moved on to the next one. I was looking at this one, but yeah, here it shows that's at the 10,000 10, mark. So we are at 10,500 in this indicate in this airspeed or 
altimeter, 10,500 feet. Uh, I totally discounted that, saw this one between the zero and the one, and assumed, or really picked this up and said it was 500 feet. This one is 10,500 feet, and it became obvious when we clicked on another airspeed in, or altimeter, call an airspeed in, altimeter question, and that was later. They used the same altimeters and asked you about the different ones here. Uh, we picked up on that when we went to the next frame here, and this is it, okay, question 3253. I think we, we got it right, and uh, this is where I noted something's not quite right here. And that is, it asks which altimeters indicate more than 10,000 feet. And we can see now, oh yeah, 10,500. So that's one of them. Two is at, let's see, we've got 10, 14,000. So this one's at 14,500. That's more than 10. So we know that one and two both are over 10. And then uh, we have uh, three. And that one, it's, see, they're, they're getting a little tricky here. That's pretty close to the one, but we see that it's just short of the one because we're at 9,500. If it was 19,500, that needle would be up closer, bumping on up on the two. And if it was only 500, then that needle would be right way down here towards the bottom. So that was uh, kind of clued us in that uh, we were wrong. And, and kind of interesting, Vince, yeah, Vince had asked what the little hash mark down in the bottom of the other airspeed indicator that we were looking at, what that meant. I didn't know. I said I would look it up. It kind of ties into this kind of interesting. But, uh, so well, let's go here. Oh, and what I wanted to say about this one, I'll follow up. We'll follow up on this hash mark later. Um, that's a striped window or flag that we saw. We'll talk about in a minute. But someone did get that right and I think it was Ethan I might be wrong about that but we got the majority of all went with a somebody went with one person went with B and then one person went with a which was the correct answer and uh, I think it was Ethan because he did ask me for a clarification on that 10,000 mark that was my opportunity to try to figure out see that I had made a, an error on that first one but uh, what I wanted to bring up about that, you, kind of, you can always learn from things. And that is another concept that we'll follow up on later videos in ground school and further along the training is very important. And that is uh, something that's called cockpit resource management or crew management, crew resource management. And that is a concept that the FAA and the flying uh, community, especially uh, commercial airlines, and it's fallen out into GA or general aviation as well. That's important. And that is that everyone in the cockpit, you as a student pilot, me as an instructor, or if you further go on and you're a first officer and you're sitting next to your captain, it used to be in the old days that captain was the king of the sh captain of the ship. He was the king and you did what he told you to do and you didn't question it. And they found that they made, there were a lot of accidents that occurred because the, there was not a team relationship between those crew members. There was a ruler and then everybody else down below them and you did what you were told and you didn't question authority. Uh, what they found is that, that there were problems. So if, if that person made a mistake, and we are all human, we can all make mistakes, that the uh, co-pilot or the first officer would not speak up and just would follow along. He knew that there was something wrong, but it, in this power relationship, he didn't didn't speak up. And he really, uh, they found that if that first officer would have asserted themselves, then they could have avoided uh, something that was wrong. So uh, I wanna encourage you, uh, everyone, that if you see something that you question, bring it up. You know, in ground school, maybe not as critical. We all want to learn uh, right, correct principles, whatnot. But it's really important in the cockpit, and that is where we all need some. If we have an extra pair of eyes looking for traffic, questioning what the other pilot is doing, asking them. Uh, you don't want to be distracting, but you definitely want to bring it up, especially if it's something that's really critical to flight safety, because they may be overlooking something that you see. And as a team, we do better and we can be uh, stronger and we two, 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 two heads are better than one. That's what uh, the idea of cockpit resource management is. Speak up, 
uh, especially when you're flying with me and you're, I mean, and we're working together, I am always interested in hearing what you see because uh, it will give me a different perspective. So that's something that I thought we would uh, expound upon with that question. So uh, the next one, and kudos, somebody stuck it out and was the Lone Ranger and was right here. Uh, so next up is, <clears throat> this is the definition. This is a little, I pulled this off of uh, Wikipedia and it uh, talks about cockpit resource management. Um, and it says the concept was intended to foster a less authoritarian cockpit culture where co-pilots were encouraged to question captains if they observed them making mistakes. It's possible that that person with all that experience that you look up to or think knows everything might not see something. And uh, definitely uh, important for you to bring that up and show, you know, point it out. Maybe they do see it, um, but it's good to reinforce that. Um, and share that with them. So uh, I want to encourage that. And let's see. Okay, so the other question that came up, um, we were talking about a V-speed for maximum landing gear extended speed. And this is one where you can use the, the letters to determine which one's the correct answer. The VLE is the maximum landing gear extended speed. VLO is maximum landing gear operation speed. So, and a lot of Typically, in most cases, that speed is going to be the same. You can operate the landing gear all the way up to the maximum speed that it can be extended. But there are, well, the air, well, the landing gear is coming down or going up. There may be a speed that's when that mechanism is most susceptible to aerodynamic forces. So it's possible that landing gear operation speed could be different than the maximum landing gear extended speed. Once that gear is down and locked in place, you may be able to fly faster. There may be a speed there, might be less that you can operate the landing gear at. Uh, and that would be a limitation of VLO. But for, for this question, landing gear extended speed, maximum landing gear extended speed, that is VLE. What's the difference between those two? And I, want, I, I mentioned that I would clarify that for you and come back with that. Uh, okay, so this is kind of funny. Vince had asked what these, what this black and white striped window or flag meant, and I did not know. What I did do was look up on the... Uh, Internet. People have asked about it because this airspeed indicator is uh, one that FAA has been using for a long time for their testing documents. And that flagged window means that you're below 10,000 feet. Once you go above 10,000 feet, that window goes away and it's just black. So if the airspeed, if the altimeters that we were looking at uh, had that window, when our, we were answering those questions, maybe we would have known, hey, this isn't 5,000 feet, it's 10,500 feet. I thought it was kind of funny that, uh, that that question really circled right back around to the error that uh, I made and uh, several of us made in uh, determining the altimeter reading on that question uh, earlier. <clears throat> so, and that's it, the cross, cross hatch flag is an area appears on some altimeters, this is definitely not true of all altimeters, uh, when displaying an altitude below 10,000 feet. So I think that's it. So I just wanted to uh, get back to you with, with that information and I will share this via YouTube. I also have a couple other videos that we discussed that I wanted to share with you. And then uh, I'll also give, show you a copy of the recording of the of the class. Uh, I don't know if you want to live through that again or not, but you could, you certainly could uh, review it if you'd like. And uh, thank you very much.